Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we're looking at assignment 7 which introduces section 3.1 which is entitled finally the derivative. And I know that we have been talking about this quite a few times but this will be the last time I promise. And what we're getting at now is again what the definition of the derivative is. So remember this that we said the slope of a curve and we'll call the curve y is equal to f of x at x equals a is by definition the limit as h goes to zero of f of a plus h minus f of a all divided by h. And this must exist in order for it to have a slope. So that limit must exist. And this, let's get it, this expression right here, the whole thing, is called the derivative. of f at x equals a. And uh, let's assume that we are done with this and we're not going to be talking about it anymore. Well, we'll talk about it, but that's the definition. And now we'll, we'll move on. So we've talked a bit about how you compute a derivative using the definition of the derivative, uh, but we want to now look at how the graph of f and f prime, the derivative, are related. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so let's look here at a graph that we have of a function that we'll call f of x. And let's think about how the derivative graph is going to look. So we know that if the derivative is positive, that means the function is increasing. And we know that if the derivative is negative, the function is decreasing. So let's use that thinking with our graph. All along this portion of my graph, my derivative is increasing. Did I say that right? My function is increasing, so the derivative must be positive. Along this portion of the graph, the function is decreasing, so the derivative is negative. And along this portion of the graph, the function is increasing, and so the derivative must be positive. And you really need to work hard to concentrate on saying the right word, whether it's increasing, decreasing, positive, or negative. Furthermore, if we look at the graph of f, we notice that right here, the tangent line will be horizontal, so the derivative will be 0, and the same thing right here. So let's take a look now at what the graph of the derivative of this function looks like. Okay, so now what I've done is brought in a graph of the derivative. So once again, here is my graph of f of x. And let's change pen colors. And in red, here is my graph of the derivative. And let's notice the points that we have talked about before. Here is where my function f is increasing, and that's where my derivative is positive. From here to here, my function is decreasing, and so that's where the derivative will be negative. And finally here 
is where my derivative is increasing and so my derivative is positive. Notice that at the points where my function has a horizontal tangent, the derivative at that point and at that point is zero. Notice also this interesting point on my derivative. That's where it's the most, that's where the derivative is the most negative, which means that's where my function is decreasing the greatest, right in there. That point is known as the inflection point. So that's a lot of important information about the relationship between the graph of a function and the graph of its derivative. And uh, that's a work that we need to be able to understand. Once you've graphed the derivative, you can also graph the derivative of the derivative. So the derivative of the derivative is what we call the second derivative, or f double prime. Now if I can graph the derivative once, well then I can certainly graph it twice. So let's organize our thinking about the relationship between the derivative and the function itself. First of all, I think it bears mentioning that the derivative of a function is itself a function. So this idea of taking the derivative, derivative with respect to x, actually operates from the world of functions. That's what it takes as an input. It does its operation and it delivers a function. It's an important idea that isn't always well understood by students. So let's talk a little bit about the relationship between f and f prime and make sure that we understand exactly how this works. So when f is increasing, that means that f prime is positive. When f is decreasing, that means f prime is negative. And so that begs the question, what about when f prime is zero? If f prime is equal to zero, most students at this point in their education of calculus will automatically say that there must be a max or a min. For example, if my graph looks like this, then at this point right here, the derivative looks like that, and the derivative does equal zero. Let's get those little things right in there. And similarly, if the derivative, I'm sorry, if the function looks like this, then at that point, which is a min, once again, the derivative is equal to zero. So let's make sure we get this. Here's my function, maximum here, and the derivative is zero. Here's a different function, minimum here, and the derivative is equal to zero. And so what we want to think about is, is it possible for the derivative to be zero and not to have a max or a min? And the answer is simple. It's yes. And the function that helps us understand it is y is equal to x cubed. We know that if y is equal to x cubed, y prime, the derivative, is equal to 3x squared. And y prime is equal to 0 when x is equal to 0. But let's think about the graph of y equals x cubed. I always draw it. Let's change our paint pen color again. I always draw this starting at the origin, making it be instantaneously flat, and drawing it like this. So here's what we are seeing, is that at this point right here, the derivative does indeed equal zero, because it there is a horizontal tangent, but there is not a max nor a min. So that then asks the question, under what conditions do we get a max or a min? So what has to be true in order for us to have a max or a min? So let's look again. If we have a max, then here is what's happening. Our derivative 
is changing from positive to zero to negative. In other words, the derivative changes sign. And that's if we have a max. If we have a min, then notice here that the derivative is changing from negative to zero to positive. So what that tells us is that we will have a max or a min, sometimes called a turning point, when the derivative changes sign. The derivative must change sign. And so now that asks another question, which is this. If we have a max or a min, we know that the derivative must be zero. Is that the only time when we have a max or a min? Another way of saying that is, we know that if the derivative is zero, we don't necessarily have a max or a min. But if we have a max or a min, must the derivative equal zero? So let's think about that. So here's our question. If we have a max or a min, must the derivative equal zero? We saw that with a graph that looks like this, or a graph that looks like this. Yes, indeed, the derivative is zero at the max or min, and it changes sign there. But how about a graph that looks like this, or looks like this, or looks like this? Each of these graphs has a point. I take that back. The last graph does not have a point. There is no maximum min here, although at this point here, the derivative does not exist because we have a vertical tangent. But if we go back to the two previous ones, at this point and at this point, the derivative does not exist. Here it doesn't exist because there is no secant, because there is no tangent line. And here the derivative doesn't exist because the tangent line is vertical and a vertical line has no slope. But we do see that there's a min here and a min here. And so what we do is we add one more condition. If we have a max or a min, must f prime equal zero? And the answer is no. It is possible, in this case, for the derivative to not exist. So although we're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves, we'll just finish this off with the final statement about these ideas. So the question before us is how do we go about locating maxes and mins? Well, it's actually pretty simple and we've kind of covered it already. We need to find all the points where f prime equals zero or f prime does not exist. These are known as critical points. And then we need to test them because we've already seen that it's possible for the derivative to equal zero and us not to have a max or a min. And it's also possible for us to have a function in which the derivative doesn't exist and there is no max or min. So, uh, once again, here is a graph in which the derivative is zero, but there's no max or min. And here's a graph, let's see what it was, where the derivative is zero, where the derivative is undefined, where the derivative does not exist, and there's no max or min. So, to find the max and mins, find all the critical points, places where the derivative is zero or doesn't exist, and then you test them. And essentially what you do to test them is ask the question, does f prime change sign? And if it does, we'll have a max or a min. And if it doesn't change sign, if the derivative doesn't change sign, then we won't have a max or a min. And if you notice here, the derivative is positive, zero, positive. Doesn't change sign. Similarly, 
The derivative is positive, undefined, positive. The derivative doesn't change sign. We don't have a max or a min. And that, generally, is enough for to finish up here.